Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the CARES Act of 2020 that deals with the CPA topics. And those topics specifically, they're going to be testable from October 1st, which is starting tomorrow till December 31st, till the end of the year. So those changes are temporary, not permanent. Because in the prior session, what I did, I looked at some temporary and permanent, such as certain aspect of the char charitable contribution, as well as NO NOL, limitation on interest expense. The reason I put limitation on interest expense with NOL, because they do affect each other, and the qualified improvement property, or QIP, also somehow it's related to NOL. So those, some of them are permanent, some of them are temporary. What I'm going to go over in this session is all of them are temporary in this session. As always, before we start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. Look, if they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people as well. And I want you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. I have plenty of resources, lectures, notes, PowerPoint slides, exercises, multiple choice questions, true false questions that's going to help you succeed on your CPA exam. So check it out. The first thing we're going to start with is the early retirement distribution. So what changes from the past? So what is the past? The past is if you took any early withdrawal from your retirement, you would, you'll would you be subject to a 10% penalty and you'll have to pay taxes. The prior law had some exceptions and the exceptions is only for the penalty. So you would still need to pay taxes even though you have an exception. For example, if you're a first time home buyer, you can take up to $10,000 from your 401k or IRA. I did so when I bought my home, I took a $10,000 first time home buyer. I was subject to taxes. I paid taxes, but I did not have to pay the 10% penalty. If you buy medical insurance, that's another that's another one. If you were unemployed for 12 consecutive weeks or self-employed eligible for unemployment. If you have medical expenses in excess of 7.5 of your adjusted gross income, it means you have a lot of medical expenses. If you are permanently disabled, education, adoption or birth, max the $5,000 and death. And I know a friend of mine is going through an adoption and I told him about this $5,000. Now those were the except those were the exception. Now we're going to have one additional exception and this is a temporary exception because obviously of the coronavirus. We have what's called coronavirus related distribution and you can take up to $100,000 not subject to the 10% penalty. It is subject to taxes. You are you are always subject to taxes, but you're not subject to the penalty. And let's assume you took ninety thousand dollar out, and I, the reason I made it ninety thousand to make it spreadable over three years. So you don't have to pay the taxes on this amount in twenty twenty. So you'll pay thirty thousand in twenty twenty, thirty thousand in twenty twenty one, and thirty thousand in twenty twenty two because you still have to pay taxes. But the IRS says the government, as obviously the Congress says, look. If you're going to take this money, we're going to allow you to, uh, you were going to allow you to pay taxes on it gradually. Okay. Now, obviously, this amount is not taxable if you repay this amount before the, before the, before you file or by the time you file your taxes. So if you took the money, then you paid before April 15th or the extension, if you have an extension, then you don't have to worry about this. Okay. And this distribution, this coronavirus related distribution must be a qualified distribution. What do we mean by qualified distribution? The person must be diagnosed with the disease or their spouse, his or her spouse, or their dependent experience financial difficulties as a result of economic shutdown. What, what type of difficulties you would have? You may be furloughed, laid off, or having work reduced, your hours reduced, or if you're self-employed, your business operation went down in hours and you are getting less money. Okay, so basically you are affected negatively by the coronavirus. This is about the early retirement distribution. A um, couple, uh, couple more new rules. Two were suspended. The minimum required distribution by April, by April 1st from your retirement account. If you reach 72, that's you don't have to take the, the minimum required distribution. It's suspended. And the access business loss limitation, that's also suspended. That's why I'm not going to, you know, if you don't know what the access business limitation, go to farhatlectures.com. All what you need to know if you are 
testing from October till December next three months. Don't worry about the business access distrib uh, the access business loss limitation. It's suspended. So simply put, you can take more losses. That's what we're saying. And the reason is why is because the IRS, again, Congress wants you to take advantage of prior losses or your losses. So this way you can survive this coronavirus. Also something new for also for this year, employers, so if you work for a company and they were generous and they decided to pay on your behalf 5250 as a student loan repayment assistance, then that money is not included in your income. But however, this cannot be instead of paying you your salary. So if your salary was, let's assume, 75000 and your employer told you, look, I'm only going to pay you 70000 I'm going to pay you 5000 in uh, uh, to pay your student loans, that's not acceptable. If your salary is 75, they have to pay you that additional 50 to 50. That's in addition to your regular salary. So it cannot be like disguised as a tax free. So if your employer is, is generous and they want to help you, they can pay on your behalf 50 to 50 and it's non taxable to you. I already paid my business loan, so I'm not affected by this at all, but just FYI. The payment must be made, obviously, before the end of the year. Not obviously, it has to be made by the end of the year. So when you file your return, you qualify for it. Now, one more thing we want to look at is the employee retention credit. If, if the business was partially or fully shut down by the order of the government, or if you lost 50% of your revenue, what's going to happen is this. The government is going to give you what's called employee retention credit. So the credit, first of all, it's it's a refundable credit. It means you're gonna get money back for employers equal to 50% of the qualified wages that are eligible employer paid to uh, pay their employees. So if you are if you retain your employees during this crisis, what's gonna happen is this: 50% of their wages, taxes on their wages, it's a qualified. And let's talk about the employee retention credit. So this is a credit is giving to employers, to employers. What for? Well, guess what? Because we had a government shutdown. The government says you have to shut down your business, either partially or fully. As a result, they want to compensate you because you're losing revenue. So how would they compensate you? Through some type of credit if you retain your employees. So partial or full shutdown by the government order due to coronavirus, or if you lost 50% of your revenue, you, you qualify for this credit and this credit is refundable. It means you can get it back. And maybe you're going to have a question like, you know, employee retention credit, refundable, not refundable or something else. Just know it's refundable. It means you're going to get money. You're going to get money back. Although you don't owe any money, you can get some money back. It's fully refundable for employers equal to 50% of the qualified wages that eligible employers pay their employees. So basically, you can get 50% of, of the qualified wages, but there's a limit, obviously, up to 5,000 per employee. And what do you mean by 50% of qualified wages? It means you are paying payroll taxes on your on behalf of your employee. You're gonna get 50% of that up to $5,000. The refundable payroll credit of el eligible wages is from what you pay them from March, till December, March, if you remember that date. And I'm pretty sure everyone listening to this recording in the US at least remember that where were you March 13 when we when the president said we're gonna shut down the country. So this is the date from December 13 till December 31st. Again, the reason for this credit is to help businesses survive the coronavirus. Give them credit. Give them credit so they pay less taxes or give them some money back so they would survive this coronavirus. As always, I'm going to re-invite you again to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. Your CPA exam is a lifetime investment in your career. This is not two, three, four year investment. This is a lifetime investment. Once you pass your CPA exam, it's going to determine uh, your neighborhood, where you live, what car you drive, what house you live in. Take it seriously. Don't shortchange yourself. My subscription is pretty nominal. It's practically nothing, but it's a long-term investment. Think about it. What's what's less than a dollar per day for you? And it's going to be a lifetime investment. Study hard. Good luck. And of course, stay safe.